We're at uh, United Middlesbrough. We're going to mm. talk about that a little bit later on. I was at Kidderminster West Ham. Oh, wow. And I'm not kidding you. I, I, I'm not kidding you. I am uh, <laughs> <laughs> not... not uh, I didn't have any skin in the game. not a fan of either club. But I have to say that when Jared Bowen tapped in, I, I was choked up. I mean, it was properly emotional. Yeah. I'd actually been sitting in with the Kidderminster fans, two old boys who'd been <clears> going... Well, one of them had been going for 40 years. We interviewed him at half-time. He was terrific. He was reading the game. It was fantastic. And I just fell for him because they were right on the brink. Yeah. Oh, right on the brink of winning it. Then on the brink of penalties. And it just... It was so... So devastating, mm. and I just felt really emotional. I'd spent a, a lot of time um, with the uh, the manager uh, of Kidderminster on Friday, and we'd been in contact every day last week as well. So, uh, and for for them to come so, so close, close wasn't it? Oh, yeah. it was so sad. And do you know, I've got West Ham fans, uh, friends, West Ham fans, and they were all saying uh, when I was I was texting them mm. as it was happening because I, I kept thinking at any minute now, it's you know it's gonna it's gonna change. Uh, I was actually in the car travelling and I thought any second now it's good, something, something will change and uh, of course it didn't and it kept going kept going I'm thinking hold on a minute they're going to get done here if they're not careful and my friend's a West Ham fan and, and I said are you watching this he said from behind the set eh? mm. I am literally watching this from behind the set eh? <laughs> because it's it's your worst nightmare as a fan it's your worst nightmare particularly if you're a Premier League club and you are up against the team you should you should ordinarily beat and you probably will beat 99 times out of 100 but on that day when it's not happening oh it's the worst feeling ever as mm. a player look I've been there I've played against teams from the league below and got done and it is horrible it really is it's, it's a nightmare and the, and the longer the game goes on and it's not happening that dread starts to sort of really hit you and come over you, you know. We'll, uh, we'll go back to the uh, Kitty West Ham game later on in this show, but I must point out at the top of the show, Declan Rice. Yes, on the pitch, he was, he was absolutely brilliant. Off the pitch, what a class act Declan right. Rice is. Went into the Kidderminster dressing room to talk to all their players, and I watched him as he was leaving. They had to walk in front of the stand to get to the bus, the West Ham bus. He stopped for every single Kidderminster fan who wanted a selfie. Every single one of them. Brilliant. Yeah, there was no no diva going on. There was no, no. I'm too big for this nonsense. No. What an absolute. He seems class like a proper act. lad, doesn't he? Oh, Declan? He's, he's he does. First doesn't he? class, yeah. He, uh, not only is he not only is he a, a fantastic, but I mean, great goal he scored. And the centre half, I'm not sure the centre who the centre half was. Aid on, uh, he just kind of overcovered a little bit and allowed Declan to just chop back on that right foot. And then he's roofed it. But you know why that it. happened? Because Declan's so good on the ball. His balance is so good. You Could go either way. You can't tell which way he's going to go. Yeah. But you just chuck him down yeah. the line. Just chuck him yeah. where there's no angle and maybe not the ability to have a shot. You know. But look, I bet he'd still have done something. He'd, he'd pulled well, it back. Well, he might. So, yeah. Exactly. He gets. He goes down the byline yeah. and he chips it out for someone else to score. He could, he's good enough to do that. But a uh, hey, brave effort. Great effort from Kiddy. And it's a. Uh, and, and for West Ham, oof, they'd have got on the bus, the lads there, after that mm. game, have gone and breathed a huge sigh of relief and thinking, let's get out of here quick. Uh, I went to uh, Liverpool-Cardiff yesterday uh, mm. as well. Now, I'm a believer that if you can't have VAR at all the games, then you have it at none of the games. And, and yesterday, I, I mean, I actually wonder, I actually wonder what would have happened because... The referee, I think that he's... And I'm not blaming Andy Madley for it at all. I thought he had a, a reasonably good game despite two calamitous, mm. calamitously Calls. wrong decisions. Mm. There was also a corner incident where, and Liverpool scored shortly after that. But mm. the two big incidents, the penalty for Cardiff, which I thought was definitely a penalty. Ref could probably have called that, but VAR should have, should have called it. And the red card for Kelleher, which, I mean, it has to be a red card. I can't, I can't see any other way around it, but... If there wasn't VAR, I wonder if the referee would have been bolder in his decision making because he's kind of he's he's been cautious in his decision making, knowing that VAR, if he's got it badly wrong, yep. VAR will correct it. Yep. So I wonder if he's just thought to himself, "Well, I know VAR's here, so I'll, I won't show a red." Yeah, and then if it is a red, VAR can tell. There's me. no doubt it's affected the way the referees judge those big calls. There is no no doubt, Aid, that uh, that now you can you can either. You can either delay that decision that little bit longer, think about it that little bit longer, and and or you can make that call knowing full well either way, VAR are going to check it and they're going to they're going to bail you out. Mm. I think as a fi- as, yeah, exactly, as, a, yeah. as an official. I mean, what was the uh, the um, it was Diogo Jota at Palace recently that decision? Oh, yeah. Do you remember yeah. that one? when Kevin Friend has gone no pen? He's gone over. The VAR guys have said come and have a look, and 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 I remember. Kevin Friend turned around and he sort of pointed to the spot and as the look on his face sort of suggested to me, I'm not really happy with this, <laughs> yeah. but I'm now having to give this, yeah. you know, and he's pointed to the spot and then I see he gets binned for a couple of games. Unbelievable. I mean, if I was him, I'd be, I'd be going mental, <laughs> yeah, wouldn't you? Mad. You'd be going, hold on a minute. 
I, I didn't even want to give that call. I saw mm. it. Comp- I saw it the way everybody else in the ground saw it. You've swung it round. You've convinced me, and now you're telling me I don't. I don't ref for a couple or whatever it is, or for one. I don't know how many. And it but- is decent. I, I will say as well on the refs at Kidderminster, John Moss was superb. I, didn't, he, he, I thought he refereed it really, really well. Um, I think we uh, both of us deserve everybody's sympathy um, on the show today. If you want to send in your message of, uh, messages of sympathy, Posh have got Man City in the next round of the Cup. So... Uh, I'm- <laughs> Have we got any chance? Um, no, no, you thanks. haven't really got. A, no, you haven't. But what you've got, what do you know? What you get, you get your players get will get the experience of of you know pitting their wits against picking the, the ball out the nets. Well, look, a they might. Times. They probably will have to. Is it at City? In it? No, it's at Posh. I was at Posh. I want to listen. You know, <laughs> could keep it down to seven. No, <laughs> if uh, look uh, at Posh, it's a diff- It's it's a great day for you. It's a proper FA Cup day. The whole town will be buzzing and uh, and you'll look forward to that aid you will yeah. listen yeah you'll probably get beaten beaten handsomely but you never ever know and I and I I've loved the attitude of some of the smaller clubs over this weekend I mean again, when I was I was at Old Trafford on Friday and I thought you know despite United starting very brightly they were bright in the first half they were quite direct they went in behind Middlesbrough and they caused them problems could have been three up should have probably been three up at half time but the minute in the second half that the game was because at one it's always in the balance the minute the second half started and, and Borough started to have a bit more of a go and Chris Wilder made a couple of changes the atmosphere in the stadium changed completely all of a sudden there was a bit of jeopardy there and the United boys went under they mm. didn't respond to it um, you deserve everybody's sympathy because uh, you had to sit through Burnley nil Watford nil yeah Oh my goodness! Are you are you okay? Do you know what I thought? Well, I looked at Roy and fant- listen. I I take me hat off to him because well, you have blue off, didn't it? But exactly, <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, you know, listen. Roy's been in football for such a long time, and he's it's been a huge part of his life. I know. And uh, but the only decision Roy I thought was going to make nowadays was: is it a seven or an eight iron into this green <laughs> that I'm that is in front of me over in Portugal or Spain somewhere nice and warm? You know, and he ends up coming out. And he goes back to to Watford, and it's that one. The conditions were horrific; they mm. were absolutely diabolical. Aid, but um, his his team were the better team on the day. Watford yeah. Oh, yeah. looked the better team on the day, and that and that's the first clean sheet for what, six managers. Mm. Something like that. Yeah. Which is amazing. Bonkers. It is. Uh, we're going to start the show. There's loads uh, coming up that we're going to reflect on, uh, including. Uh, AFCON have a look at uh, Winter Olympics as well all coming up over the next three hours going to start with Leicester City uh, who they didn't just lose to Forest. there's no shame in losing a cup tie anything can happen in the cup over 90 minutes they got battered so I mean Brendan Rodgers he's kind of has he thrown his players under the bus you remember when he said at Liverpool don't be in the envelope I mean all those players that he's, he's talking about it's their mm. fault they're all in the envelope aren't they well look there, there, there's he's clearly got issues at the club now Brendan he has and I do think every now and again it's in it's a, within a, a manager's prerogative to not throw people under a bus aid blatantly, but I do think publicly you need to let them have a bit now and again. I think you do need to leave a bit on one or two now and again. If I was a player in there, if I was one of the senior players, would be say, you'd, you'd be turning around to Brendan and saying, "Who are you talking about? Yeah, who? Give us a name. Don't just generalise. You know, don't." Give us an, if someone's not doing it, dig them out and tell, tell, um, tell them why they're not doing it. And I do think that that's part of a manager's toolbox, if you like, you know, that he can, he's got that card to play, not, not at, the, at, the, at the first sign of a problem, but when you've now clearly got serious defensive issues, which they seem to have, they are chucking in goals left, right and centre. Oh, they are. 56 goals conceded in all competitions. That's eight more than any other club in the Premier League. So here's the question. Think about these uh, questions uh, over the next few minutes, uh, Andy. Is Brendan actually a great coach because he's lauded as a great coach? Is that actually true? A couple of other questions. Why do you make Tielemans captain and then drag him off when he's leaving anyway? Why leave Schmeichel out? That made no sense to me as well. And how damaged now is Brendan's reputation? Because he's been talked about with Arsenal and, and Spurs and Man United, what feels like just a few weeks ago. And now look at Leicester, mid-table in the Premier League. Fans aren't happy and they've just been battered by rivals Nottingham Forest in the FA Cup. So let's hear from you. 03717 mm. 22 Drive on TalkSport. 